Good evening, guys. I hope you guys are good and are doing so well. Uh, it's another day, another dollar. If it's your first time, do us a favor, add yourself a favor, and make sure that you hit that subscribe button so that you can be able to see when we are live. And also in the description of this video, join our WhatsApp group so that you can be able to ask us questions anytime, anywhere, and in real time so that everything will go well. So today, we are doing our preparation for the trial exam so we're gonna look at trigonometry first in the group people are asking for trigonometry so we're gonna start trigonometry today then uh, on wednesday we're gonna have Euclidean geometry then another day on friday hopefully we'll be able to have our analytical geometry so that we can be able to be fully equipped on our paper two because we know that on paper two uh we have uh, 20 marks statistics we covered it on the previous control test uh, we have uh, 40 marks analytical geometry we have 40 marks for trigonometry of course and the last one which is the master master masterpiece which is Euclidean geometry is always like 50 marks so today we want to see if we can be able to cover our trigonometry from this preparatory exam which was written last year in the Gauteng province all right so as you can see from my screen this is from Gauteng province and we will try to do the trigonometry of this province so that everyone can understand how we solve problem if you need more understanding in uh, in the basic stuff uh, i'm gonna also put a thumbnail here so that you can be able to go and check those videos where we we'll start by explaining everything from grade 10 when we're looking at our trick ratios when we're looking at our own um uh, our reduction formula and everything which we did we covered already so we won't be covering that now we'll just go through the questions and after that we explain further on the questions which we have boom in the diagram below question five let's write question five over there now we're solving question five in the diagram below p is the point uh 12 is to 5 as you can see where p is which is in the first quadrant as you can see and we have t which is a is to b in the second quadrant and we are told that all t is perpendicular to all p that's interesting even you can see even the 90 degrees there so we know something about perpendicular lines that their gradients when you multiply them they should give you negative one so by knowing that already you're already like highlighting the things as you are reading the statement and now ps is perpendicular to the x-axis we can see that 90 degrees making the triangle a uh sorry ops a right angled triangle so by that already we know that we can apply our pythagoras theorem because we know that that's a right angle triangle over there so from that point also we are also told that pos is the angle theta as you can see over there now without using your calculator so don't do uh, and don't use your calculator because if you use your calculator as when we are marking at the exam center we know that you have used the calculator determine the value of tan theta uh, which is 5.3.1 let's do that now so we know that we are given our triangle which is in the first quadrant and it's given with letter p which has a coordinate of 12 is to 5 so we know that a coordinate p is x is to y so in this instance p is 12 is to 5. So in other words, you're saying that it is 12 units on the x-axis and it's uh, uh, 12 units on the x-axis and it's 5 units on the y-axis. So we need to know what is the value of r. And of course, we know again, we're given point T, which is A, is to B. So now we can be able to calculate the value of r according to the Pythagoras theorem before we even solve the problem which we have at hand. So we know that r squared is always equal to x squared plus y squared what is our x squared our x is 12 units so that's 12 squared plus 5 squared over there then after that we use our calculator which is a casio calculator i can't see my here right now but we use our casio calculator so that you can get our proper answer 12 squared then of course you have our and then we square both sides we square both sides then now of course we finally have our r which is the hypotenuse side using your calculator your r will be equal to to 13 okay then now let's solve the question 5.3.1 what is tan theta we know that tan theta is always equal to opposite over adjacent so again we come back to our triangle which we are having here which is triangle o uh p and s okay so we can now be able to find these uh tan theta we know that tan theta is opposite over adjacent so our answer there will be equal to 5 over 5 over 12 that's basic stuff i'm sure everyone knows that now we go to 5.1.2 now we need to find sine of theta since we've already calculated this we know that sine theta is always opposite over hypotenuse and we know that our hypotenuse is 13 and our opposite side in this instance is 5 so our answer will be 5 over 5 over sorry 5 over 12 then this will be oh my way what's happening here what's happening that'll be five over five over 13 over there so we are cruising nicely because this just is basic stuff so now they are telling that if 
uh, without choosing a calculator, saying that A, if TO, uh, calculate, determine the value of A, okay, if TO is equal to 19,5 units. So we are given the length of TO, or they are saying that uh, now we're on 5.1.3. Five point one point three. We are given that TO's length is equal to nineteen comma five units. Now they say that okay. Now that you know that TO is nineteen comma five units. Now what will be the value of A which you have over there? So with that being said, and with us knowing that okay, this is just basic stuff. This is easy stuff. I'm sure everyone enjoys when we do maths, and we know that okay, when we look into this properly, let's use a different color over there. So this is our TO. So we can see that they are saying that TO, which means this length of this part to this part which is R is equal to TO, which is equal to 19,5. Now they are saying, what is A? We know that this is a coordinate A is to B, and since A is to B, which means our A is representing X and B is representing Y. So that would be B over there, and that would be A over there. So since we know the R, what is the relationship between A and R? We know that the relationship between those two is we are looking at the perspective of using the coordinate, which is cos of, of theta. So we know that cos of theta uh, uh, or that course there will be giving us the proper answer there. But you can see that it's in the second quadrant, which is 90 plus. So let's write that down first. So that therefore we know that cos of 90 degrees plus theta will always be equal to A over the 19 comma comma 5 because it's in the second quadrant, okay? Then after that, we know that in the second quadrant, cos it's a core ratio. So 90 plus is in the second quadrant and cos is negative, which means the core ratio of sine will always, uh, of course, will be positive sine theta, which is equal to A over 19,5, okay? Now that we have this answer, we know that sine theta, we have calculated sine theta and sine theta, we found that, okay, sine theta is always equal to, where are you? Here it is, which is equal to 5 over 13. So now we have negative 5 uh, over 13, which is equal to A over 19,5. Then, of course, now we can cross multiply so that we can make A the subject of the formula. Then A now will be equal to 19,5 uh, times negative uh, 5, which we have over there. Then we divide that by 13. Then again, we'll use our, our calculator so that you can get the answer over there. Okay, so when you are getting the answer over there, that will be what? Using your calculator or using mine, I am getting negative 7,5. Units. So that would be the value of, of A. So my A is equal to negative 7,5 units. And it really makes sense. Why is it making sense? We can see that we are having a negative answer. And even on the quadrants which we have here, we can see that this is the second quadrant. And on the second quadrant, we know that it's always 90 plus and 180 degrees minus. So cos in this second quadrant is always negative. So we can see also that our A value in this quadrant, that's the X the negative x uh, coordinate or next uh, uh, negative x axis. So in the negative x axis, our a value definitely supposed to be negative here, and it's only the y value which is b, which is going to be which is going to be positive. So maybe this year they'll say calculate the value of b. So how do you calculate the value of b? You know that the value of b you can calculate it by saying b over r, which is the length of to, which should be equal to, of course, maybe your sine of sine of theta or sine 90 plus theta because you can see that it's in the second quadrant and we know that in the second quadrant is 90 plus then we use our reduction formula then boom you get your four marks is this stuff uh, uh proper stuff where anyone can be able to solve anytime they want to solve uh, the question now moving forward to the next question now which is 5.2 sorry about that someone is calling 5.2 back to red i love red i hate blue now let's go back to red 5.2 so now on 5.2 we are so okay determine it let's enlarge our screen so that everyone can see what's just happening now so on 5.2 determine the value of the following without using a calculator again so please 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 don't use your your calculator to solve problems okay so now they are giving us sine of 360 degrees minus 2x times sine of negative x divided by sine of 90, de uh, 90 degrees plus x plus 2 cos squared of 180 degrees uh, plus x. Now we can see that this is where we need to apply our reduction formula. So we know these things guys and we know that we need to use our, our triangle which we have always or our reduction formula which we are having here. So we know that this is 90 plus, this is 90 plus, this is 180 minus, this is 180 plus that will be 360 degrees minus that will be 360 degrees plus and we know that all students take coffee okay so all which means all the trig ratios in the first quadrant are positive in the second quadrant only sign is positive in the third quadrant only turn is positive and in the fourth quadrant only cos is 
positive now let's reduce this thing sine of 360 degrees minus so we come to the angle 360 minus 360 degrees minus is in the fourth quadrant and is sine positive or negative it's negative so that's the first reduction so that will be equal to negative sine of 2x again we go back then we have neg uh, sign of a negative angle we know that sign of a negative angle is always equal to to negative sign always because every angle which is negative when you are using sign it's going to be negative of course we divide by sine 90 plus again 90 plus is in the second quadrant and sine is uh, is positive but we know that sine is a core ratio which is cos so since now we know that it's positive in the second quadrant which means the core ratio also is going to be positive so now we're going to have cos of x here then plus of course two now we have our cos squared of 180 plus so we know that cos of 180 plus this will be the same as cos of 180 degrees plus x then of course we can we can square all of this okay then we know that 180 plus let's do this next time which is got negative time negative that's positive so now we are left with next sign 2x times sine of x divided by cos of x plus 2 then we know that cos of 180 plus 180 plus is in the third quadrant and in the third quadrant it's only term which is positive so our cos is going to be negative but we know that cos of x now is negative when we square this is just going to give us a positive cos so that's why we end up having cos x squared which is positive so cos squared of cos squared of x which is positive now we know something which is nice and easy that sine 2x is a double angle and since it's a double angle we know that that's the same as 2 sine of x times cos of x times now that sine of x which we have here divided by cos of x plus 2 cos squared of x this and this will cancel sine x and sine x will multiply each other that will be 2 sine squared of x plus 2 cos squared of x then of course because we are smart we can take 2 to be our common factor out then that will be sine squared of x plus cos squared of x over there then we know that sine squared of x plus cos of squared, uh, squared of x is always equal to 1 then we have 2 times 1 then our final answer will be equal to 2 the beauty of trigonometry let's go in the exam let's go and get those full marks because if we don't get them who is going to get them for us so that's how we solve that without using our our calculator we're just playing around with the reduction formula and the reduction uh, 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 formula which we are given over there now proceeding now to the next question question they're saying that given cos 42 is equal to root k without using a calculator determine the value of sine squared of 69 in terms of k this is interesting this is amazing so we are told that this is 5.3 i get excited when it comes to math guys i apologize for that so we know that we are given cos of uh, 42 degrees which is equal to root of k so something which is just something which we never been asked before we even look at the question that what is sine squared of uh 69 degrees so there's something which is beautiful about understanding this uh, uh, uh terminology and how trigonometry plays around if we plot this in the first quadrant we have our 42 degrees there we have our 90 that will be 42 degrees and that will mean that if it's equal to root k which means it's root k and our hypotenuse is always equal to one over there so now after that point we know that 90 plus 42 90 plus 42 will be equal to 2 then that will be 10 13 132 then 180 minus 132 over there that will be 8 that will be 4 that will be 48 degrees so this will be 48 degrees there all on that angle it's just us plotting and you know that this part here we can calculate this y value when we want to calculate let me remove that big screen so that everyone can see here we go so now we are given cos 42 degrees so we know something about 42 degrees and now our question is we need to calculate the value of um uh, sine squared of 69 degrees in terms of of k how do we relate to 69 degrees in terms of k this is again this is an easy stuff because we know that cos 42 is a double angle so we know that cos 42 degrees if we take it as a double angle that would be equal to 2 cos squared of 21 degrees over there okay minus one okay then from that point now we know how to navigate our round we know that cos 42 is root k which is equal to now we have two cos squared of uh, uh, uh 21 degrees which is the same as two sine squared of 69 degrees minus one that's just easiest as, as as that and straightforward as that as we are breaking down the question which we are having then of course that would be now a root k plus one which is equal to two sine squared of 69 then the question wanted us to have solve sine squared of 69 so we divide both sides by two we divide both sides by two this and that then therefore we can conclude that our sine squared of 69 degrees is equal to uh, root k 
plus 1 over over 2. So that will be our answer. I enjoy doing maths. I enjoy it. Please practice so that you can be able to enjoy as I am enjoying. Now let's look at 5.4. Given the identity. Oh my word. Identities. Is stuff because we can be able to play around with what we know, compound angles, and you can solve the problem. Sine 5x times cos 3x minus cos 5x times sine of 3x. Oh, 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 oh. Sine cos cosine. Sine cos cosine. That's already a compound angle. We all know that. Sine cos cosine. Sine cos cosine. That's a compound angle. So we can be able to solve the problem without even wasting much time. So now they said prove the identity that the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. So let's break down the left hand side. And how do we do that? We start by saying the left hand side is always equal to. Then now we copy whatever we have. We have sine of. 5x times cos of 3x minus cos of 5x times sine of 3x. Then, of course, we divide all through by tan of 2x. That's the first step because we want to break this left-hand side because it's too complex. And there's a lot of things which we can play around when we are looking at the second side. So now we can see that this is sine cos cos sine. Sine cos cos sine. So this is us now knowing that, oh man, no man, no man, no man, no man. We have what we call compound angles. So since we have compound angles, you know that sine of A minus B is the same as sine times cos minus cos uh, times sine. So this is what we have. So this is the same as sine of 5x minus 3x all divided by tan of 2x. Interesting, interesting, interesting. That's why I love maths. So that would be sine of 2x divided by uh, tan of 2x. This is great. Oh my word. Before we can see that, we can see that sine 2x is a double angle, but there's something also we know about tan 2x that tan 2x is an angle, it's an identity which we taught in grade 11 that tan of theta is always equal to sine theta over cos theta. So let's try to exercise our right. So this can be written as sine of 2x times tan of, uh, sorry, tan, uh, sorry, divided by tan of 2x. So what is tan 2x? This will be equal to sine of 2x divided by our tan will be now sine of 2x divided by cos of 2x. I love maths. I love maths. This will be called the sine of 2x multiplied now because now we are dividing. So that will give us a uh, reciprocal times cos of 2x all divided by sine of 2x. Then of course this and this is standard. So Tavana, they cancel each other. Then now we are left with only cos of 2x on the left hand side. But they say that prove that the identity is equal to uh, oh my word, I just did something which is not good. I forgot this negative one. Why did you guys tell me? Okay, we have negative one here, guys. Oh my word, I'm so sorry. So now everything now is going to change. But not really. It's just going to add our negative one. Negative one. Why did you guys tell me that? Then we have our game. Bracket, negative one. We put a bracket over there. Negative one. Then after we solve that, that's negative one. So that's just going to be negative minus one there. Okay, guys, I'm so sorry, guys. <laughs> so sorry i'm so sorry because i literally forgot about that but now we know that cos 2x is a double angle so since the double angle can convey that to be in terms of sine so we know that the double angle of cos 2x can be called to cos 2x or uh, cos uh, 2x can be called to 2 cos squared of x minus 1 it can also be called to 1 minus 2 sine squared of x it can also be called to cos squared of x minus sine squared of x okay these are just all the double angles of cos 2x but now we can see that our question we are given something which has to do with with sine so let's choose the second one so that will be equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared of x of course minus 1 <laughs> this would be 1 minus 2 sine squared of x minus 1 then 1 minus 1 is equal to 0 then we have negative 2 sine squared of x which is equal to the right hand side yes here we go so that's how we solve the problem we are playing around with what we are given we are playing around with the compound identities which have been uh, taught in first hour uh, and grade 12 first term we are playing around with what we know we know this so we just have to know that sine cos cosine we know that that's an identity and of course we know that our tan 2x there that's our identity which has been taught from grade 12 and that says that cos uh, sine theta over cos theta then from that point we can be able to get the answer which we always want so with that being said we can say and we can be able to prove that it is equal to our right hand side now let's look at 5.4.2 now determine the values of x 
for which the identity will be undefined in the interval for x is an element from 0 to 60 degrees. Oh my word, this is easy because we can see that we have the denominator. So the function is always not determined at the denominator. So this is 5.4.2. So this is easy stuff because we know that this will not be, let's, let's write that English so that everyone can understand. So this function which we are having or this trigonometric or identity which we are given, it's undefined. Uh, uh, if our tan 2x is equal to 0, if that is equal to 0, when you divide that with the calculator, anything divided by 0 is undefined. It's literally undefined. So now we can be able to solve. This is now easy stuff because we know that tan of 2x is equal to 0. So now we can solve this, guys. I mean, we can solve this so that we can get an answer. So arc tan of 0 there, that will give us 2x, which is equal to our 90 degrees. Then from that part, we know that we can solve for x divided by 2 divided by 2. Then our x is equal to 45 degrees. So we can see that the value of x is x is equal to 40 degrees. And also at x is equal to 0 degrees, guys, when x is equal to 0 again. So these are the two values of x which are in the interval. x is the element of 0 to 60 degrees over there. So they won't be defined in those two terms, guys. So otherwise, you could have just said, of course, a divided by tan 2x is equal to 0. Then try to plot the function using your calculator so that you can get the coordinates in which it's going to give you an undefined stuff so that you can have the proper answer. Now, let's look at 5.5. .5. I love maths. I love maths. Given f of x is equal to 2 cos x minus sine squared of x, okay, uh, right, so what do you want us to do? Let's let's check that out. So in this 5.5.1, we are uh, initially on 5.5, we're given f of x, which is always equal to 2 cos x minus sine squared of x, okay, that's, that's, that's interesting, but now what do you want from us? That's the question, that's the million dollar question we need to ask, what do you want from us? They're saying that, show now, show that f of x can be expressed as f of x is equal to cos x plus 1 squared minus 2 guys this is so much fun so now we can see that we need to change everything to be in the terms of course and we know that we are given sine 2x and we know something about sine 2, uh, 2x that we know that cos squared of x plus sine squared of x is always equal to 1 so when we make sine squared of x to be the subject of the formula that would be 1 minus cos squared of x yes that's an identity from grade 11. So we're applying that identity which we have been taught in grade 11. So moving forward from that point now, we can see that this will be now equal to 2 cos of x minus, then of course that part to replace with 1 minus cos squared of x over there. Over there, over there. Now this will be equal to 2 cos of x minus 1 plus cos squared of x, which is the same as cos squared of x plus 2 cos of x minus 1. Then now we can see that this is just a normal, 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 normal uh, 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 quadratic equation which we can solve then. So when you solve this, this is going to be easy for you because I mean, I mean, I mean, this is already straightforward. So we can see that we can have this answer and we can see that this will be the same as what cos squared of x plus 2 cos of x. Uh, plus 1, of course, minus 1, minus 1. We can still see that we can still get 1. 1 minus 1 is equal to 0. Then it's still get, remaining with that negative which we have there. Then we can solve that this will be cos of x uh, plus 1 all squared minus minus 2. Hey. Hi. Mates is, mates is fun. If your friend doesn't love mates, please, please make sure that you just tell them, like, you know what? Our friendship is over because math is it's nice. You can never go wrong with math. Now let's look at 5.5.2. 5.5.2. Now hence or otherwise, which means whatever you have sold from above, now use it and find the maximum value of f. So how do you find the maximum value, guys? This is easy because we know that we are having our cos of so let's just say maximum. Uh maximum at or maximum of cos x equal to 1 so we know that it will be max when we can have our cos of x plus 1 all squared is 1 plus 1 all squared which is just equal to 4 because 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 then that is going to be equal to 4 but in our instance now we know that we are given uh cos square cos of x plus 1 as we have solved there squared minus 2 
which is equal to so two. So that will be our answer there. So the maximum is to understand that we have a maximum at cos x is equal to one, and now breaking it down, one plus one, then you get squared there, then you get the four over there, so that you can get the answer which you finally want. So if you resolve or resolve this question and going back to what we had initially, we initially have what the values which we initially had, then of course after that you get your twenty six marks. Smart people, I guess. Now let's look at question six. Last question on trigonometry. Given the equation cos of x minus 30 degrees plus 2 sine of x is equal to 0, show that the equation can be written as tan x is equal to negative root 3 over 5. Okay, that's 4 marks. That's, that's hectic over there. Why would they do that? But I mean, like me and you guys, we know this, that these guys just want to play with our lives. So, I mean, we are not scared of anything. We are not scared about anything. So if you're not scared about anything, let's solve these questions. Let me try to maximize the screen so that you can, guess, can see this question properly. So on that question, we are given that cos of x minus 30 degrees plus 2 sine x is equal to zero so from that point i mean guys we can be able to show what they want us to show this so let's let's minimize this can let's let's play around this so we know that this can be an ideal which is cos of x times cos of 30 degrees plus sine of x times sine of <laughs> there is just a common angle because we want to show what they want us to show so we are not jealous we know how to solve this because we have been taught common angles if you want more clarity on common angles please go down on the uh, videos of here but you will see me explaining everything from compound angles breaking them down and proving everything for you over the plus two sine of x is equal to zero so we know that this will be the same as or uh, cos 30 degrees without using a calculator again or you can use a calculator actually we know that this is straightforward that would be root 3 over what let me check that would be 1 2 3 yeah that would be root 3 over 2 cos of x plus of course sine of 30 now that's 1 over 2 1 over 2 sine of x plus our 2 sine of x is equal to 0 then of course because i'm a good person today i know that if we multiply all through by 2 so that we can only leave uh, remove the denominator there that would be root 3 cos of x plus sine of x plus now 2 times that 2 that would be 4 sine of x is equal to 0 then that would be root 3 cos of x plus 5 sine of x which is equal to 0 because sine x plus 4 sine x is equal to 5 then that would be what uh, 5 sine of x is equal to negative root 3 cos of x all right then if we divide okay this is not nice this is not interesting i love interesting stuff guys so if we divide this side by cos of x what side by cos of x then now we'll be having sine x minus that that will be five times tan of x equal to negative root three ah, 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 ah. we divide by five both side then we are therefore having our tan of x which is equal to negative root three over five wow guys oh is this true let's check that first let's check it first oh my word i'm so excited okay so we can see that we can see that tan, tan x is called negative root 3 over 5. Let me recap that so that everyone can be on the same par with me. So we see that on this part here, we try to erase this 2. And how do we do that? We multiply it all through by, by 2. This also multiply by 2. This also multiply by 2. This also multiply by 2. So this 2 and 2 cancel. This 2 and 2 cancel. Then 2 uh, we multiply by 2 as well here. That would be 2 times 2. That's why we have the 4 here. And after that, we can see that sine plus 4, that's 5 sine x then of course we can solve our problem oh guys let's solve maths guys there's no way we're gonna fail maths this year because the able to tell is here for you if you're tuning in right now do yourself a favor and subscribe to this channel and like like share your comments and join our whatsapp group so that you can be able to engage as much as we can now let's move on to 6.2 let's go back to red i love red you love red. If you love red, type on the group uh, on, on the comment over there. Six point two. Determine the solution of the equation cos x minus thirty plus two sine of x uh, equal to zero in the interval of negative one eighty to positive one eighty. Guys, this is so easy. We have already solved that part, and we saw that tan of x is got negative root three over five. Sort of like a general solution, guys. So we can be able to solve this problem quick, fast. Okay, I'm sure everyone can do that. We know that this is uh, for for tan, so that would be the arc tan. Of negative root 3 over 5 plus of course 180 degrees of k where k is the element of 
integers over there then we calculate there using our calculator and getting our 160 degrees over there or comma 89 degrees what is it that's just a big angle over there so but when you use that calculator i'm getting two angles i'm getting my um let's uh reflex angle which is 19 uh comma one one let me see negative 19 comma one plus 180 degrees of k where k is the element of integers and this is a reflex angle which can also be 160 degrees uh comma 89 plus 180 degrees of k where k is the element of integers that's easy stuff there so the values which one is x is equal to negative 19 comma 1 1 degrees and x is equal to 160 degrees comma 8 8 9 this is just a smaller angle then when we are now looking at 180 degrees minus that x value we'll be able to get the correct answer oh my word i apologize for that here we go so we see that this is just a ton of x so we can look for the general solution you know that the general solution of a ton of x will be uptown of x plus 180 degrees of k where k is the element of integers over there then if that you can get the answer it's a weekend it's a sunday i hope you guys went to church all right so these answers which we got you can see that they are also in the interval of negative 180 degrees less than x less or equal to 180 degrees which is positive now let's look at 6.3 now on 6.3 let's maximize the screen is done hopefully i won't forget in the diagram below the graph of f of x is called negative 2 sin x is drawn for x is the element of negative 150 to 210 degrees okay so write down the uh the amplitude of f ah, guys 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 come on that's 6.3.1 over there guys that's easy stuff we can be able to write down the amplitude so we can see that the maximum point in the graph is going from zero going up it's at zero to two so we can see that our amplitude there is just going to be equal to two that's easy stuff i didn't have to write that draw the graph of g of x cos x minus 30 for the interval of x to that on the grid provided in the answer book ah, 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 ah. easy stuff easy stuff why is it easy because we know that 6.3.1 or oh, 6.3.1 this will be 6.3.2 so when we are plotting a function guys this is always the same case let me just show you now so when you plot the function the first thing is to be able to understand that you are given g of x which is equal to uh cos of x minus 30 and also they have given you an interval which is negative 150 to 210 so now we can just use the interval which we have over there then we plot our function negative 150 then maybe we can use 90 let's use uh uh, let's use 30 there so negative 150 then of course we're gonna have here it's gonna be 0 30 60 90 uh sorry yeah 90 120 150 180 210 so this would be negative 30 negative 16 negative 90 negative 120 negative 150 so this would be the, the corner then after that we use our our calculators so when you use our calculators we just press this thing you say uh, a mod then after that you choose graph number two then you put our function over there then of course they will ask you it's starting where it's starting from negative 150 where is it ending it's ending at uh 220 what is our step our step in this instance you can see it's 30 the difference between two points is 30 degrees 30 degrees so after that you can just elaborate and uh, substitute there with uh 30 degrees now now uh, that will be that uh, that will be easy uh and you can be able to plot a function then there's two uh questions 6.3.3 now you need to analyze the functions ah uh, guys where g of x will be greater than f of x that's just you now seeing on the function which you have plotted so that you can get the value so that won't be really hard on your side so this is what i had prepared for you guys so try to do it's your homework it's your homework try to do six point uh 3.2 and 6.3.3 then post on our whatsapp group there might be something over there you never know so do us a favor and make sure that you do that for yourself and ourselves from buyani to you all let's see each other next time uh, this coming week when you're looking at euclidean geometry stay put practice more questions join our whatsapp group so that you can interact with you if you have any question anytime ask us questions on the group so that you can be able to interact even on the chat box here on youtube just ask us your questions so that you can be able to entertain and we can be able to engage with you guys till we meet again